name is Sascha Friesecke. I work at the Alexander von Humboldt Institute for Internet and Society in Berlin, and I am one of the research heads there, and I lead one group that is called Open Science, and we look at how the Internet is changing the research process. That's a tough one to say, like, what's the, the number one factor, but to me, like, from what I see, it's probably collaboration. So what we currently see is a system which has developed over time and came to a very, very weird situation where you as a standard PhD student have to learn kind of every trick of the trade on your own. So let's say you do quantitative research. You firstly read the entire literature. Afterwards, you design a survey or you design a research method and then you design a survey, for instance, you have never designed a survey before, so you'll probably do something wrong. Afterwards, you go into the field, you have people fill out your survey, you've never done that before, so you probably have done something wrong. Afterwards, you do the analytics, um, all, the, um, all the statistics on your own, you've never done that before, you probably do something wrong. Afterwards, you write a paper and then you send it in. So, what I, what I see from, um, from research where this is way more efficient and where people have kind of streamlined this process is that they tend to collaborate far more and far wider than the average PhD currently does. And I think that our system in a way is designed so that you um, have an incentive to work in a very small group currently and not give too much of the credit away to other people and that makes the system kind of inefficient and more collaboration would drives research to faster results also. As I said before, I think we have an established incentive system that is not designed for real-time collaboration. It's rather designed for few people writing something on paper together and sending it into a publisher afterwards. Um, and I, I think that you have an incentive to do very small projects, but I think that people will shy away from that and we'll see more and more and we also see that in some disciplines uh, collaborations where people have a um, far more knowledge in the, the single domain that they work in and that people will learn to um, ask questions earlier in their research and also give feedback in order to get feedback on their own. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that we'll see like an overnight shift from the current research system we have to a completely new one just because we have the technology available. What I'll see is that more and more like the small groups will transform or will do more collaborative research or a more open research if you want to call it that. Um, and they'll have great results of a great quality and people will see that this method seems to work for them and slowly but surely adapt. Um, in, order to, in order to give credit to them, I think it'll be more multidimensional than it currently is. So the current journal system is based on being a first author of a paper and having as many citations as possible. So this is like the, the two core um, incentives people have. And I think they will be a bit more wider spread in the future. The, the entire metrics movement kind of is a first step in saying, well, the way we measure impact might not be the best way to do so. And I think it's a very early stage in doing this, and we will have far more elaborate um, methods in the future, and we will not only measure the quantity of, um, <clears throat> of publication lists, but rather the actual impact, which is pretty tough for us currently to measure with only um, citations and publications. So I do believe that altmetrics will play a role in the future. I don't think they are somewhere near where they want to be in order to make a real impact on the science community as a whole. But I think it's, uh, it's a way that we'll see more and more in the future. But again, it's a very, very slow process because it's a very established um, system that many people are involved in and they are kind of reluctant to change overnight. If 
we say we have this idea of sharing our research ideas very early on and kind of openly developing the research results, that means that it's far more clear what we do. Every time we do like a wrong turn, other people can see that and they can come back to what we did and see that we did a certain mistake at some point. People have to learn to be far more open about that. Currently, if we we work on research, we write a publication, we send it in, we get published. And if in that publication there's a single typo, um, a researcher feels bad about it that he or she did not check that exactly and make this mistake. And in the future, we will learn we we'll have to learn to deal with um, making far more mistakes and having them kind of in the open. And that's okay as long as the result is good. But as this um, a systematic change, which will be kind of tough for people to grasp. So I think this is uh, one of those problems that uh, you probably wanted to address. And yeah, it's, it's cultural shift, I think, which which will um, which will be problematic for for many. I think it's it's kind of a matter of time. So people will learn to adapt to this method as they learn to adapt to other methods. But it'll it'll be a process that um, kind of gives credit to the brave ones in it. I think, and uh, I believe that it, many people feel uncomfortable with this, and you cannot just simply throw them into the cold water and say, "Well, this is how it has to be." But you kind of have to. Um, get them very slowly to um, try the system out and give them like a, a, an easy way to test it, an entry point, so to speak, and not to say, well, you have to change completely overnight because this is the new thing and it might work better.